and welcome to the Winning Mentality podcast with me, Charlie Bosco. Now, I've mentioned on a previous podcast that in addition to hosting this show, I also work as the presenter for the International Federation of Sport Climbing World Cups. And as part of that, I've got access to athletes uh, and support staff in a sport that is now less than two years away from its Olympic debut in Tokyo 2020. And I'm also... As you will no doubt know, if you listen to this show regularly, an avid climber myself, and I think some of the people I meet on the climbing tour have got pretty good stories to tell, including Klaus Eisseller. He started out as a machinist in his uh, native Vorarlberg in Western Austria, but quickly realised that uh, churning out machine parts, which then got shipped to China, was not going to be enough for him. He found a way to get into a top physio school in Vienna, graduated, realised he still knew nothing about real-world physio, uh, educated himself further, an ongoing process, as he'll explain. He applied for a job with the Austrian climbing team, which he got. He opened his own practice, which now employs 11 people. And basically, Klaus is a guy who gets things done. Uh, Along the way, he also developed his own method for treating finger injuries and was asked by arguably the best rock climber of all time, Adam Ondra, to be his physio. And Klaus talks about what it's been like observing and and treating Adam close up. And he also tells the amazing story of how he got all his staff to clear their diaries for a week so that they could work full-time on Adam's recent knee injury. All in all, this is a conversation full of insight, uh, inspiration... And a good dose of humour too. Let's try it. Maybe you should explain the situation now. All right, I'll explain the situation. We are sitting in uh, Klaus's hotel room. It's 10 o'clock at night. It really isn't as suspicious as, suspicious as it sounds. No, it's but, not. <laughs> uh, we're both here attending the uh, Climbing World Championships. Yeah. Two years out from the Olympics. Okay, climbing's going to be an one. Olympic it's sport. Suspicious. Yeah, it is. It really <laughs> yeah. does sound suspicious. Sorry, sorry. We always meet at climbing competitions. <laughs> yeah. uh, and, and you're staying in a hotel just across from the venue. Yeah. And uh, you're a busy man. We were just comparing our work lives, and it'd be fair to say yours is uh, a bit busier than mine. You're a physio. Mm. You have your own practice, and you're following the um, Austrian climbing team around. Yeah, that's a part. That's a part for me. So... I just keep going here. Yeah, if I come home, it, it will be Sunday evening, Sunday night. And on Monday, I go and work in my outpatient clinic. You said outpatient clinic? Yeah, yeah outpatient. Practice, yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's going to be even more busy because I have been on the world championships. And that's a bit the, the witch circle, if you want to say so. So you're tired, you go and you have to work much more. And yeah, but somehow, you know, it's it's... This workload is like, mm, it's different. Working at home is different from working with athletes. And that gives me this freshness in my mind at the same time. Despite the fact that I didn't sleep enough and I'm tired, but I'm fresh in my mind. Does that sound lovely? Yeah, no, no, yeah, it makes so sense. So it's kind of, it, it's a different way of getting, being tired or getting tired. So it's, it's okay, I think it's... Well, in England we say a change is as good as a rest. Yeah... I wouldn't agree 100% on that, but <laughs> I get the point, yeah. It's better than no rest. That's true. But soon I'll be in, 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 in Sardinia for two weeks, and uh, I'm gonna, I think I'm going to enjoy that thing. A bit of climbing and relaxing and family time, yeah. And you just started this podcast asking for sympathy. You just <laughs> found out you're going to Sardinia, one of the yeah. nicest places in Europe. Yeah. But uh, when I came in, uh, I finished work, and, and you'd finished, and you are just ahead of me, and you were in here watching a video about physio it seems like it's it's a passion for you it's not a job it is oh man yeah 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 100 percent. it is it's a hmm you know some sleepless nights are because i have an idea so i wake up and i run to my one of my i run to my book have this book like one for adam one and one for other ideas and i write it down and if this idea keeps staying in my mind a week later I really look it up really seriously. And then I decide if I want to make something out of it or not. 
And when did you, did you get into physio? What was the, the journey to doing it? I mean, do you, to be a physio, you need a, a bachelor's degree? Yeah. What's, the kind of, what's the process? Mm. Actually, I'm not, if you will, want to be very picky. Uh, I used to be, a, a, I did an apprenticeship to become a mechanic, so I'm a, you would say, machinist, so not working with cars. And I worked there, but uh, I, was, I wasn't happy with my job. And I didn't know what to do, what I like, but I just knew that this is not what I wanted. Um, and I started this education to become a climbing trainer in Austria. There are several steps you have to go through before you come become a climbing trainer. And on the way to instructor and after instructor for peak performance athletes. And I think then, then you have to do this general trainer education, which is three semesters. Uh, and there was one superhero guy... <laughs> He just took some, some. I think if I remember right, was he? He's taken one of the more beautiful girls out of this group of <laughs> trainers. <laughs> it was a <laughs> super. I don't know. It was a strange situation. Uh, well, but I remember that he took that girl. She was complaining about something, and he did a funny maneuver, and she said, "Oh, it's all gone now." So, imagining you're standing there and you have no idea about physio treatment and anything. And there's somebody has have a uh, that person has a complaint. And there's another person who just does a maneuver and talks the person around or something like that. And the person stands up. Oh, it's all gone. I was like, oh, really? You want impressed. to be that guy? And I thought, wow, that guy can really help people. And I used to be a machinist at that point. So if I did my job really good, this special machine produced 500 more fittings in in eight hours. And my boss said, oh, wonderful. There are two more. Uh, 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 boxes sent to China or somewhere else. I just didn't get the feedback from what There's I did. There's no satisfaction. It, not really, no. And so uh, that was really the appeal. You, yeah, you wanted to make no, people better. Yeah, but then it was still a long, uh, long road because that guy was like, "Nah, it's so hard. They don't take you in class." You have to have uh, uh, the certain degree first, and then you, you can apply. But uh, it's very hard. Out from three hundred, they might take three, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, but I really wanted it. Like I really, really wanted it, and I had to find a way. So I started with this evening school. I applied to hundred schools at the same time to be very much on the safe side. And finally, I made my physiotherapy degree. But that was only the starting point. I mean, after three years of physio. You, st you think you know everything and then you have your first patient and you realize, fuck, I have no clue. <laughs> <laughs> That's respect. actually, the, then you, you know you're starting all over. You kind of, you, I'm the king. I did my exams. I'm physiotherapist. And there the first patient comes and you have no idea. <laughs> and then you have to really start it all over. So That's when I decided, okay, you got to dig deep. And... Um, and uh, at that point, I was impressed by an uh, osteopath, a really good, well-known, really master of his field. And uh, it was totally clear to me. After seeing many physios in many fields working, and I compared all of them, and this guy was standing out so much, I had to go that way. Um, and then was the next journey was from Vorarlberg to Vienna, because in Vienna, it's one of the most known schools for osteopathy. And they, everybody asks that, yeah, this is the most expensive, but the best you can have in terms of education. And it's eight hours with the train. I know Austria seems to be small, but I live almost in Switzerland. So yeah, Vorarlberg and Vienna is a f as about as far apart as you can get. Yeah, yeah, that's in it. In a that, small country. That's it, that's it. So... But I thought that there's no other way. If you wanted, you have to go, I mean, go big or go home, right? Oh, yeah. yeah, so yeah. I had, <laughs> is that the saying? So I, I kind of found myself in a situation where I really knew what I want to do, but I couldn't pay that school. So I still, in the age of, what was it, beginning of my 20s, I went back to my dad and said, ah, listen, dad, I, <laughs> I, have a deal. <laughs> I need some money <laughs> for the ed education. And yeah, so, yeah. And for the first three years, I had to uh, uh, have a loan, some while well, not with the bank, with dad or yeah. And uh, after three years, I could slowly pay myself and so on and so on. And what's the big difference between the theory and the reality? You said when you get your first patient, it's oh, so different. Everything. 
you know, you learn these tests and at the beginning, you have to believe what they tell you, right? You have no other chance. You have no idea. This is the book. You got to learn it first. And if they tell you what the triceps does or the biceps or any other muscle or joint, you just you have one voice and that's your teacher and you have one book and that's the book and you learn it and you believe it. But then if you go to the osteopathy school, they will show you the four studies that have been done on dead muscles and you're like, what? Only four studies in how many hundred years? And then they show you why we think that this muscle has this function. Because at that time, 1920, whatever, something, he was the guy that made the most beautiful drawings and everybody could get that, but the other stuff was too complicated. No. Shit like this is happening. I'm, oh, sorry, shit like this. Well, stuff like this is happening all the time. So you have to be very careful with all diagnosis. You have to be rethinking everything. But the shitty part is it was so much easier to be a physiotherapist so or to only believe what they've told you. You know, that's what you learn, that's what you do. You know, you have back pain, train your belly muscles. Easy. Do you think some people do that? Do you think some people left school and just the the theory is like the reality? Oh, every day. Really? Oh, I think so, yeah. yeah so you were unusual in that you thought, wow, this isn't what I oh, thought it was. Do you know... Do you know Man in Black? The film with Will Smith? Yeah. yeah. You, know, you know the scene when he has these testings and he comes in this uh, cellar and he has to shoot, to shoot all the aliens and all guys shoot all aliens, but he just doesn't shoot them because he thinks, oh, they're just hanging around. Yeah, yeah. So he is the completely strange guy. Yeah. But at the end, he's right, right? Yeah, yeah. I feel I'm the strange guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of, uh, I do things differently many times. Not all the time, but I think many times. And what led you to that? You just see enough people where normal physio isn't working? Well, in competition sports, it is uh, skeletal, muscular, and joint-related stuff. It's not the craniosacral approach that you need uh, a lot, but hmm, I'd say through osteopathy, and the combination with physio and also being a trainer for sports climbing, you combine everything much better. And uh, you just, if you learn anatomy and you learn it once, you forget it once. If you learn it the second time, you forget it again and you forget it again and again. But if you do it more often, you study anatomy, there's more and more that keeps sticking to your head, right? Yeah. And I've done the process just, I think, a few times. <laughs> and you were a climber at this stage. I'm you, a, you were a personal personally you were climbing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. And did you know you wanted to specialize in climbing or did it just oh, no, become no, logical? Not at all. Um if, when I was in physio school I was a climber and then another guy said he's a climber too, and three years later there were five who did not climb out of thirty. You so, won them over. Yeah, kind of. Not only me, but yeah, maybe mainly. Yeah, yeah. It was, <laughs> I infected the whole class with climbing and we loved it afterwards and okay. we went together. And yeah, sure, I still love climbing. But right now in my life situation, now I just don't climb too much I'm, because I have to look after my company, my, ele ele uh, um, uh, my 11 uh, ele em employees. Uh, employees. Oh, thank you. <laughs> That's a hard and English word, then, actually. Then, no, it's not. Uh, and then I have a uh, after national team, and I look after Adam, and yeah, two kids. I know how that goes. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. I know That's how half of that, that goes. Look, this you bed, this bed, it's all mine. I don't have to share it with my two little kids. <laughs> <laughs> I can sleep really good. And Anli said, "Use the time, sleep very well. We're coming soon." Yeah. So that's the good part of it. <laughs> you keep telling me I'm an amateur because I only have one. I'm just starting. Uh, that's, that's one kid is no kid, right? <laughs> Let's tackle those, those things in order then. You mentioned the Austrian climbing team mm -hmm. and, and Adam, uh, Adam Ondra. Yes. Austrian climbing team. How did that involvement uh, come about? Did you approach the team? Oh, I applied. Are you applied uh, officially? Because it seems, looking in on, on Team Austria, you're all just friends. It seems obvious that you all work together. Yeah, yeah, no, but I was not this... Uh, I was never a successful competition climber. I mean, I competed a little, and, but just regional cups. I won once, and, and it's not uh, not like the level they had in Innsbruck, because uh, that always used to be another level. If you're from in Vorarlberg or any other region of Austria, you go, wow, those guys in Innsbruck. Oh, Ten years ago, it was the thing. So 
Um, no, but I was there. I was always working uh, in the climbing gym. I was working, helping out. I was playing to competitions. Sometimes at the beginning I was climbing in competitions. So I knew a few people and then I applied for that. And they said, ah, I think we know that guy. Maybe we should. So I had uh, maybe had a little advantage because I was, uh, uh, I think, the only one who had to do with climbing before. Uh, well, at the time I applied, and then the, uh, it's 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 a testing uh, f uh, phase. If you if we want to be uh, honest, so we had a few other physios, and um, or yeah, just for a short time or one time. And um, uh, now it's uh, Marcos for the lead team, and I uh, went back to only bouldering team. And what does most of the work involve? Is it um, preventative or? Yeah, no. Um, if people hear this, they might think I work for the team only, or many people see me as the therapist for the Austrian team. It's not that I'm employed, it's a different system. Some countries have employees and they work 100% only for their team, and they can dig really deep and they can go to for into prevention programs and all this stuff. Um, well, I do it automatically because I discuss stuff with Taiko, I bring it in, but that's all because I just I just drop it in. I don't have to. I'm not not mainly not paid for that. Um, I'm here for for I'm I'd call it scratching on the surface. I'm kind of the fire department. If somebody falls down, uh, I run over. I'll check with the athlete. Uh, or well, I do some checks and then and then I talk to the athlete if it's possible to keep continuing the competition or if you want to risk and uh, just give him a clear overview what I think, what is the risk and what is not the risk. You might see Johanna Ferber climbing tomorrow and she has a, a strain on her elbow and um, I told, talked about uh, the risks and what's possible and what is not possible and she decided she will compete tomorrow. That's why I looked up this uh, uh, I did some, I looked up in YouTube, maybe I'll find a better taping technique than I had before, um, but I think I I stick with the method. So, so you're like the firefighter. That you don't, is the you don't get to work with them full time. Uh, no, not if they don't want it. But sometimes they come to Freiburg or some athletes, they come and just go regularly to my um, office. But it's just quite far away, so it must be a special case. Usually uh, finger problems, because I developed the method, how to treat fingers, and it works uh, really well. So people will come with finger issues from far away. And um, that's one part of the, the thing, the kind of fire department. And the second thing is recovering. It's just, let's say for Jacob, a massage is very important. So I'll just be the, his massage therapist in between rounds. Um, and then you always have something tweaky, some aching muscles or special, whatever. You know, you gotta, you know about the hooker's knee? No. I know, sounds funny. Yeah, I defined that, that uh, term. Uh, hooker's knee just comes from heel hooking or toe hooking. And it's one which, thing... Which is a climbing move, not which a sexual... Is, uh, it's, oh, yeah. <laughs> adventure. I, I, I thought that people who listen to this might know that already. But yeah, no, it's, no, it's no. a climbing move, not a... Yeah, yeah. Despite what you think. <laughs> so <laughs> you can get it from climbing, yeah. And uh, we see that um, we therapists, the climbing physios, see that, that we see that more often and a bit more chronically. And in, I mean, we have seen meniscus blowouts and ACL ruptures uh, in the past and we still see that every now and then but now it's changing a bit this uh, because we're hooking a lot and stuff like this you you try to fix in between rounds or even before and yeah so and speaking of knees that leads me on nicely we ha I have to ask you about your involvement with Adam Ondra now for people that listen to this who aren't climbers and, and I understand that the majority of people that listen to this aren't climbers Adam Ondra is Lionel Messi Roger Federer. I mean, he is. <laughs> well, yeah. you know, we could have a, a big argument, and climbers are probably shouting at their uh, their MP3 player now or their iPhone. But probably the best rock climber of yeah. all time, I guess. Uh, certainly up there. And uh, you're his physio. How did that come about? Mm. Oh, you want to know the story? How this happened to me? Yeah. How did you? Well, how did was, you become um, Adam's physio? I mean, he. Okay, if I start, where should I start? Okay, um, I wrote my master thesis and I created the Isile method to treat fingers. We're going to talk about that later, by the way. And then, um, yeah, but that was, it was, I mean, that was more than 100 pages. I was completely, I was done. I needed a break, you know? And we planned to have a break for six weeks in Tenerife to decide whether I keep going with climbing or not. Just 
stop with all this climbing stuff or if I do it so Anneli said my partner said okay then we should create a homepage and you know do something real and I said yeah I still love it we have to do that and then we flew home back home spent some days back in lower Austria where Anneli is from and I just found out that uh, Adam will have a presentation there a slideshow about the dawn wall and um, other achievements I thought, okay, that sounds interesting. And I texted him, hey, Adam, can we talk after your presentation? I mean, you knew him anyway, well, just from the climbing world. Yeah, I mean, a little. Yeah. You know, yeah. So I texted him and he said, yeah, no problem, yeah. So we sat there in this um, restaurant, I still remember that, and I said, explained to Adam, we want to do a little video thing, how to feel good as a climber series. Could you, you know, be the star to show what happens if you have shoulder pain or something similar? I said, yeah, no problem, but can you help me stay injury-free and climb better? I was like, ah. Uh. That was the first silence, the first silent moment. I thought, ah, oh, okay, Adam, just ask you help me climb better and help me stay injury-free. I said, oh, uh, I think I can do that, but that involves much more than only one meeting and he said yeah yeah i know i know i know and i said yeah wait adam you know if you really mean it you know if you really mean it this is my email address send me an email tomorrow think about it and uh good night kind of so tomorrow i mean the, the next day I, I just opened my email and i had six emails from adam all of them Look at this. I cannot do this. Look at this climber. He's stronger here. I'm so weak with this. Why is it that I cannot do this? I have problems here. Can you help me with? Who? He's serious. You realize immediately, hey? And then you go, okay. First, he's very serious. Second, um, he's not telling you how much of a climbing star he is. He is just saying how bad he's here, 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 and here. And I realized this is going to be a lot of work. But then I realized, okay. This is exactly what I was looking for. Because scratching on the surface at a certain point is, well, not getting more interesting, you know? It's like when I remember myself 10 years ago, first World Cup, treating Killian Fish, who body climbing style, I was like, you know, don't do it wrong, don't do it wrong. Think about your techniques. Is that okay for you? And he said, yeah, yeah it's okay. But I wasn't kind of nervous. I was kind of, you know, you have this positive nervousness when you really want to do something and you really want to achieve something and... And it kind of came back with Adam. I thought, oh, that's really good. That's exciting. It's, yeah. Yeah, because it always strikes me with physios. I'm always getting injured. And I'm probably a really boring patient. I go <laughs> five times. They fix my ankle or whatever. It, it, I can see why that would not be interesting after a while. It's, and suddenly you get this... Special well, anyway, we're, we're calling the world's best climber so that we don't have to mm, yeah. keep repeating it. You get the world's best climber and coming to you and he wants to, to go deep. Yeah, but that if, I mean, that one thing is the standard physio and osteopathic approach of helping somebody who's injured. Because if I go and work on Monday, my people come and complain about their back, about their knee, about they have issues and I try to help and give my best to, to help them uh, uh, maintain or get back their life quality. But with Adam, it's can you help me climb better? So it's first thing we did in the first three months was uh, working with a few issues he had and analyzing him, him and I wanted to get to know him as a person. And then after getting the personality and the osteopathic approach, the physiotherapeutic approach and, on, and so on and so on, I fixed a few, uh, well, we fixed it too. We got a few little things and then we started with that silent project which was much more on working on his performance. And that was really interesting because we are on a path that has never been work before it's like that's something you cannot go and ask another coach or something about i mean sure i talk to coaches but kind of we have to find a new way because it's adam it's like he is leading the world of climbing in in many things but who is leading him that's my biggest problem here well i was going to say did you feel qualified to do it Oh, I'm not no. qualified. No, just, I'm not you're qualified. figuring it out. Nobody's qualified. No, but that's what I mean. You're you... getting qualified. You qualify yourself to try, trying and trial and error at some point. And Did you think you'd be able to find a way, though? Did... Was he presenting you with specific problems? Like, I can't, yeah. I can't do X and I want a solution. I think usually it's like this. If I really want something, yeah, then I really go for it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it's more of I put myself into situations 
where I don't know if I can achieve them or can do this. And then because I am in this situation, I will really try to for, to perform my best and it seems to work so far. It was similar to, I just, if you want to compare, compare to the nose, which is, uh, again, for non-climbers. Ah, for non-climbers. No, it's no. fine. The, the 3,000 uh, foot rock wall El Capitan in Yosemite. It's very known. It's the climb in the States. And it was a big dream to go to Yosemite once. And I was there. And I had no climbing partner because nobody wanted to go with a greenhorn like me. <laughs> I had no clue about using these leathers and this stuff. I was in Indian Creek uh, one day before to just use these camelots and then these this, this cams and these devices. And everybody said, oh, yeah, I'm looking for a partner for the nose. And I was like, here, here, here. <laughs> How many years are you into this? And I said, oh, I just, uh, you know, uh, I have no experience. Oh, thank you, no. And I kind of found a crazy dude. He was in a similar position. And if you're in, you have to perform. You have to go. There's no way back. And we did it. Uh, so I, if you want to compare, maybe this is a similar th scenario to me. Uh, maybe. And what's it been like working with Adam? What generally happens? Does he have a specific uh, goal or problem he wants to solve? Oh, there are some goals, but they're not. It's a bit confidential. Some. No, stuff no. I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, does he? I mean, does he have specific goals in his own performance? Like, I want to be able to do this physical act. Yeah, one physical act. I mean, that was just a little detour, but one physical act was. Um, I can't do a front lever. These and these and these guys can do front levers. I can't. So that that's hanging off a pull-up bar mm -hmm. and then putting your body horizontal. And I thought, well, do you need to do it? And he said, nah, not really. But I wonder why can all these other guys... So because we were, we were working on some shoulder thing at that point, if I remember the right a year ago or so, one and a half years ago, then um, I included a few more exercises and I think two weeks later he did it. It was like this. But generally, is he wanting to work on weaknesses? Uh, rather oh, than sure, yeah. To, to there's something specific he can't do. Oh, yeah, he has some weaknesses. Yeah. Okay, we, won't, we, won't, <laughs> we won't go there. We won't go there. Nah, yeah. He no. doesn't look like he's got many to me, but you can always find something to be better at. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's true, yeah. And um, we're developing techniques to for him, especially for him and only for him, to recover better. Um, if you recover better, you can train more, if you can train more, you know, and so on. So uh, the focus at the moment is on recovery stuff, and we've adapted some interesting things, especially for him. Um, but you have to keep in mind when you work with Adam, he's not like every other patient. If you want to test his knees in terms of rotations, in terms of flexibility, uh, the tests, the standard tests, uh, you, you have to adapt everything. They, they won't work in some case of him because he's super flexible in his hips, super flexible in his knees. You've seen the movie Silence. You've yeah, seen, seen the it. drop knee, the crazy stuff. Yeah, That's only possible for him. Is that natural for him? For him, it's okay, yeah. It's just what his joints are more elastic than yes. a normal person. Mm -hmm. I'd say so. Okay, and um, the reason I it might have sounded a bit strange to say it was connected to knees, he, he had a bad fall uh, recently. Yeah, that was recently. Oh, my God, yeah. He, he, he hit the hit floor from what, eight meters? Yeah. <sighs> that's a long way. Yeah, that's a long way. And he landed on his feet? And he landed on his feet and he kind of jumped up back like a loaded spring. Super, he was the moment. Like he realized it immediately when the rope uh, was going through and he uh, started to fall. He realized it immediately and immediately he was prepared for crash landing. And that was maybe the only uh, spot in that area, as he described it, I wasn't there, that was sandy and not rocky. So he was super, super lucky on the landing. But then he, I was on holidays and he didn't want to bother me. And later on, I came to see him in, in Spain. For he wanted to uh, flash a 9A+, plus, a really hard climb. But then I, well, yeah. Well, he initially thought there was no problem, hey? At the beginning, yeah. And I was like, ah, you know. You uh, can't hit the floor from eight meters, no, can you? No, can't, you can't. Uh, but then you think, yeah, you know, maybe because the rope went through the belay device. There was just a bit too much slack, hey? But did the rope come tight kind of as he hit the floor? 
No, it didn't. Not at all. No, not at no, all. No, no rope. At and all. they made a no you you make a knot in the end of the rope so you can fall through the de device if you if you make a little mistake. But there, there was a new rope and the knot even came off. Wow. Yeah. So, um, it was a bad fall. Yeah. And then um, summing it up, he we underwent more more procedures and fi finding out that he had a, a severe bone bruise at his femur and he squished a meniscus really badly and uh of course of because of that he had a bursitis so their damage was um it was a severe damage and there was something at the acl so uh, again you have to rethink everything what you do and and then at that point i also asked uh uh, orthoped, uh, orthopedic surgeon, orthoped I know, what would he do, consulting him and, and getting an, another picture. And so when you have to decide such things, it's good to have a backup. And my backup is first my clinic and then I have some very selected uh, people I really trust in, uh, in case I need to. Um, but we were uh, more or less agreeing on the same procedure, what to do, and I pimped it a bit with some other techniques and thought about it really, like, yeah, you know, with Adam, you think everything two to five times. Uh, and it turned out really good because he could start at these world championships. If you have the same situation and maybe you go to a surgeon who is quite motivated on surger surgeries, it might have ended differently. He might have had surgery and stuff like this. And then he, uh, I was very concerned of his let's say knee twisting abilities with his you know the style adam climbs. yeah well, it's a big part of what he does that's adam's climbing style so it was important to prevent uh that and after surgery i think it wouldn't be the same and so you managed to fix it without surgery luckily we could yeah and mm -hmm. you think the prognosis is is good i think the prognosis is good but about the squeezed meniscus uh we'll see a squeezed meniscus is better than a uh, partly cut out meniscus. Okay. Yeah. And yeah, if you see him climbing now, he's super fine. Okay. No, that's uh, that's important for him. And um, yeah, uh, the good thing was that uh, in my therapy bar, my clinic, I just uh, when I realized what we need to do, I made a call. Uh, a call my assistant immediately and told her, uh, Dagmar, you gotta block all available appointments for the next ten days. Well, and he came to stay. Yes. And you just worked on it for 10 days. Yes, all of my team. I informed my whole team. I have uh, five therapists, uh, 11 employees, five therapists. And we uh, had a... I informed everybody and Adam was treated by everybody of, out of us. And yeah. That is incredible for mm. one knee. Yeah, but... It's an important knee. As you can see, it worked out, no? Yeah, I know. I mean, <laughs> amazing reward to yeah. see him on the wall uh, a couple of days ago. Yeah, he had a he had a, we had, we kind of did a a wave of treatment. So that was the first wave, like all in, and then he went home for ten, fourteen days, and he had exercises and things to do. And we made appointments at home uh, with him because he has a massage therapist there and a uh, kinesi kinesiologist, kinesiologist. I think so, sorry. God, I'm really testing my knowledge now. It, yeah. Ah. yeah, he has so, someone else. So we, I am kind of guiding or talking to them and then we made a plan and after that he came back and we had some more treatments and so on. And it must be uh, great with Adam. I mean, you and him seem to have a really strong relationship. Are you able to think more and more long term and develop more and more yeah. ideas with him? Right now we're just in a new process about um, talking about a new contract idea and... Um, We'll see. You know, I have to. Uh, I I gotta have time for my family. That's important. And Adam understands that really good. So in Flatanger for three weeks, I was there with my son and Annalise, and she was pregnant at that time. But now there's one more kid, and uh, so we agreed on. Um, I help you as much as you needed, but uh, not over over treat him. Kind of. I. It, there are periods where I don't see Adam for two months and then I see him very intense for a short time and it depends, it depends what we need to do. And also within the sphere of climbing, you, you've uh, created your method. You have to tell me about that with the, with the finger injuries. Ah, the finger stuff. Well, when it comes to treating fingers, uh, as I'm into this since 10 years, I used to treat many other athletes from many other nations. Um, 
there is nothing for finger treatment, right? There was this book you can, I don't know, stretch a bit or something, but there was no real treatment. And I had to kind of develop my own method or I tried out of, out of many methods I learned, I tried to adapt it and I changed it and I adapted again and readapted. I tried it and kind of, I would say my method is a smoothie made out of many fruits, <laughs> but if you mix it all together, it's not a fruit anymore. So it's, uh, and, um, uh, my, uh, my professor said, uh, yeah, how do you call this what you do? And I said, I don't know. It's just what the way I do it. Yeah, but you need to name it. Is it after that or after that? And I said, no, but this is, I had to change that. I had to change. Well, then it's your method. And I said, my method. So yeah, that's why it's easily a method now. Yeah. And it's a way of fixing Fingers. finger injuries, which, yes. uh, outside the climbing world, I guess, and not very common. No, it's very specific. But you have to understand that um, that scene. If you if you think you go to a hand surgeon and it might be a very known hand surgeon, they don't work with climbers. They if you're born with six fingers, they might uh, take one off. If you have a, a very bad exercise with a chainsaw, they try to repair your fingers on stuff like this is happening within the in the field of uh, finger surgeons. They don't. They're Yet, or well, the market is uh, evolving. Is it's getting bigger, and if there's more money behind it, more climbers behind it, and more of a market, there will be more specialized doctors for it. But it's still a very small margin of of that finger stuff. And is your method concerned with repairing a, a specific type of injury? Mm, no, um, I wanted to have the field as open as possible and I could prove that my method works within chronic pain as acute as in the same, is, a, is the same. Uh, so is it a series of exercises or is it a no, treatment? No, it's a treatment. It's a manual treatment on the fingers and it's a local osteopathic uh, method on the fingers. But my easily method is only part of what I do. If I, You need to check from from the shoulder down to your finger. You need to check everything. That's my osteopathic approach. And after that, I put in my easily method, which is the what I really I actually do on the finger. Um, on um, uh, physioandclimb.com, I have a bit of uh, information about that. You can, if somebody's interested. Yeah, yeah I, I read and, and understood most of it. It made yeah. sense. Um, it, the technique se itself is very simple. It's uh, if you want to be picky, it's easily method is the way you approach it, how you do it, and easily techniques are three techniques, and one of out of the three techniques has three uh, different uh, uh, intensity grades of technique. Um, so the approach is the uh, what I ca I call it standard treatment position. That means that your uh, patient will come into your office and perform. Um, or I have a little climbing wall in my office so he can take a hold, pull on it and tell me exactly where the pain is and what the pain causes. Then I uh, tell this patient, okay, um, go away from the wall with your hand or you, and then reposition at the same position, find the same position again, look for every angle from, from feet up to elbow, shoulder, everything must be in the same position and you have to pull in the same intensity. And that is the checking point because that's your personal, so it's individualized, but it's also standardized because you repeat the position and then we'll do the treatment and then you do the same again and we have an outcome, it's better or not. And have you had any interest from outside the climbing world? Are, are people thinking this could be applicable yeah. to other places? Mm -hmm. I had a professional soccer, a soccer player, uh, a goalkeeper with a thumb problem and then a... Uh, uh, a schütze. What's a schütze English word for uh, uh, shooting? Sh a shooter, like a biathlon or? No, I think he was only shooter. Oh, like a... But professional, like pro on a high level. Okay. Mm. And I had a... Um, a uh, yeah, what is it? Marksman? No, I don't know. Yeah. Someone, be Somebody with a gun. <laughs> <shouting> with <laughs> a rifle. Yeah, someone, I think he was shoots, yeah. he, a sport with a rifle. You need a, tr you need a good trigger finger. Yeah, and, and then I had a hand surgeon himself with uh, problems with his fingers because a hand surgeon... To do perform hand surgeries is very delicate. You have to be very uh, precise. precise with your fingers. So, uh, and the pi a pianist. Oh, really? I think he was a pianist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the, in general, well, not not that not all pianists. Uh, you know, it's it's still very um, very much uh, specific for climbing. So it's really specific for climbing. It okay. works the best for climbers, I think. Okay. Well. You already mentioned that 
you don't get enough sleep. You're a busy man. Last, I don't want to say that. I no, should change it's okay. that. It's, it's yeah. okay. You it's, know, when I go I, home, I, I, have to I, make, I have to make uh, the, some highlights from the action today. So I'll just keep y- working and you go to bed. Y- you know? You're the busy guy. See? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. Uh, it makes a change. But um, five, ten years from now, you think uh, you'll still be doing this or are, are things with uh, your method or things with Adam leading you to think that there could be another door opening in the future? Puh. Right now, it's too many doors. I got to really choose which one I should uh, follow more. Uh, I'm trying to reduce things. I just had a car accident that showed me whew, don't lift that fast, kind of, or, or rethink what you do. Um, hmm. But the thing is, my motivation, I mean, it's still there, you know. It's like, yeah, sure, I'm in climbing. Sure. <laughs> I can't think that I'm not into climbing it uh, somehow, but yeah. No, I, no, it's great. It's great uh, to hear such passion. Yeah, I, I got a, I got a, I have, I have too many ideas. Yeah, we'll see. I'm still into climbing. You're a lifer. We're, we're, we're lifers. What's that? Like when you're in something for life, you know. Like when people go to to prison for life, they're a lifer. I think we're climbing oh, lifers. Maybe I'm just addicted. No, oh God, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta ask Louis and Catalia and and his, my family and yeah, but I I'll be in climbing yeah sure yeah all right cool I will uh, I'll let you get some sleep and as I say I'll, I'll go off and work but you know I don't complain I don't grumble yeah uh, good luck with your work then <laughs> and Charlie thanks for the interview it was Th- quite interesting question yeah it was man. fun yeah, thanks man yeah, thanks and uh, we'll, yeah we'll see you tomorrow back at the championship back <laughs> <laughs> back back on track back at the work- workplace yeah no rest for the wicked thanks man thanks bye. Thank you to Klaus for his valuable time and I'm pleased to report that when I saw him the next day he had enjoyed a full night's sleep without any children jumping on him. Now we've got some very diverse and interesting guests coming up on The Winning Mentality so stay tuned for them in the coming weeks. In the meantime, all we ask in return for these shows is that you go on to wherever you get your podcasts and leave us a review, preferably a nice one. Oh, and uh, please spread the word and